This is Concept E Classes and today we will study Chapter 11 of Class 8 Science, Force and Pressure. So in this chapter, first we will see what is force and then we will see how does a force come to play. That is due to interaction between objects, a force comes to play. Then we will explore more about forces. Then we will also see what happens when a force acts on an object. When a force acts on an object, it can change the state of motion and it also can change the shape of an object. Then we will study the types of forces which is contact forces and non-contact forces. We will also deal with pressure, pressure exerted by liquids and gases and finally atmospheric pressure. So first let us see what is force. In science, a push or a pull of an object is called as force. For example, when we close the door, we push the door, therefore we are applying force there. Similarly, when we open a door, we are actually pulling it, there also we apply force. So forces plays a very important role in our life. All actions like picking, opening, shutting, kicking, hitting, lifting, flicking, pushing, pulling, all require force. If you see all these examples like lifting the box or opening a drawer or a cricket ball hit by a batsman, this all is due to the action of force. Now when does this force comes to play? Whenever there is an interaction between two objects, there is a force between them. Let's consider the examples given in the textbook. In the first image, we can see that a man stands behind the car and the car doesn't move as there is no interaction between the car and the man. In the second image, the man begins to push the car and he applies a force and the car begins to move in the direction of the applied force. That is, there was an interaction between the car and the man and hence the car moved. Similarly, here we can see the girls appear to push each other and here the girls are pulling each other. Here also the girls are applying force on each other. Similar is the case of this man and the cow. So from all these examples we can say that at least two objects must interact for a force to come to play. Now let's learn more about forces. To explore more about forces, let's take a quick example. Consider a heavy box and try pushing it by yourself. It will be very hard. Now ask one of your friends to help you to push it in the same direction. It is easier to move. Do you know why? It is because when the forces are applied on an object in the same direction, they add to one another. Now ask your friend to push it in the opposite direction. What can you observe? Does the box move or will it stop? If it moves, in which direction? If one person is stronger than the other guy and if he applies a lot of force, the box will move to the direction of the weaker guy. Or if they are equal, applying equal force to the box, the box will not move. So what can we understand from this? If two forces act on the opposite direction of an object, the net force acting on it is the difference between the two forces. Similarly, if you consider the example of a tug of a war, we can see that two teams pull the rope in opposite directions. And here the rope does not move in any direction. So from all this we learn that a force could be larger or smaller than the other or equal to each other. And the strength of the force is usually expressed by its magnitude. A magnitude is the sum of all the forces acting on the body. We also have to specify the direction in which a force acts and also if the direction or the magnitude of the applied force changes, its effects also changes. Now let's see what happens when the force acts on an object. The first one is a force can change the state of emotion. For example, while taking a penalty kick in football, the player applies a force on the ball. But before being hit, the ball was at rest and so it was the speed zero. Now the applied force, what will happen? It makes the ball moves towards the goal. Similarly, in the case of a goalkeeper, he dives or jumps to save up the ball. By his action, the goalkeeper tries to apply force on the moving ball and the force applied by him can stop or change the direction of the ball, saving a goal being scored. So from this observation, we can say that when a force is applied on an object, it may change its speed. Now how can a force change its speed? If the force applied is in the direction of its motion, 
the speed of the object increases that is for example of the boy he keeps hitting the ball in the same direction of the motion of the ball the speed of the ball increases and if the force is applied in the direction opposite to the direction of the motion of that object it results in the decrease in the speed of the object just as we saw in the previous slide when the goalkeeper it applies force on the moving ball it either stops or it the ball gets deflected so in that case there is a decrease in the speed of that ball and similarly when a force is applied to the body at rest it can be put into motion and also the body in the motion goes to rest if force is applied that is before uh, hitting the ball in a penalty kick what happens the ball was at a state of rest and when a force is applied motion of the ball takes place similarly when the goalie catches the ball what happens the ball which was in motion it goes to rest now force it not only changes the speed of an object but also the direction of the object for example in cricket a batsman places shot by applying force on the ball with the bat here the ball is thrown in a straight path but the batsman hits the ball thereby changing the direction of motion of the ball similarly in the game of volleyball we can find that the players often push the moving ball to their team so in both these examples we can say that there is a change in direction of the object due to the application of force now this change either in speed of an object or the direction of motion of the object or sometimes both is described as the change in state of a motion and thus a force may bring a change in the state of motion but it doesn't mean that the application of force would always results in the change in the state of the motion for example there is no effect in the force if we try pushing a ball so that's we cannot say that force always changes the state of motion the next effect can that can be observed when force is applied is that it can change the shape of an object that is when we need a doubt we apply force and there is a change in shape of the doubt similarly when we stretch a rubber band because of the force there is a change in shape of the rubber band similarly is the case of a balloon when we apply force the inflated balloon it changes its shape so from all these examples we can say that the force can change the shape of an object so from these two slides in short we can say that a force may make an object move from rest it can change the speed of an object if it's moving it can change the direction of motion of an object it can change the shape of an object and it may cause some or all these effects so it is important to remember that none of these actions can takes place without the action of a force that is an object it cannot move by itself or it cannot change the speed by itself always a force is required so the next topic is types of forces forces are classified into two contact forces and non contact forces contact forces are again subdivided into two muscular forces and friction non contact forces are again subdivided into three magnetic force electrostatic force and gravitational force now let's see each of these in detail the first one is contact forces to lift a book lying on the table we require to touch the book similarly to hold a bucket of water we need to touch the bucket that is a physical contact is required so generally to apply a force in an object your body has to be in contact with the object and the force that can be applied only when it is in contact with an object is called as contact force and the contact force are of two types muscular forces and friction now let's see more about now what is muscular force the force resulting due to the action of muscles is known as muscular force that is a force which is caused by the action of muscles in our body is called as muscular force for example all the activities that we do like walking or lifting in any object here the force is caused by the action of muscles similarly animals they also make use of muscular force to carry out a load or for pulling this muscular force is called as a contact force because it can be applied only when it is in contact with an object now let's see the next contact force which is friction consider a ball which keeps on rolling on the ground and gradually it slows down and comes to rest here we can see that no force appears to be acting on the object yet their speed gradually decreases 
this is due to friction the friction it opposes the motion of the ball similarly if you take a car or a scooter it comes to rest when its engine is switched off this is also due to friction as it opposes the motion of the car so we can say that friction is a force responsible for changing the state of the motion of an object here only friction takes place no other force acts upon the object the force of friction is always opposite to the direction of the motion of the object since the force of friction arises due to the contact between the surface it is also an example of contact force now what are non contact forces a non contact force is a force that comes into play when the objects are not in contact and there are three types of non contact forces a magnetic force electrostatic force and gravitational force first let's see what is a magnetic force if we have noticed two magnets they either repel each other or they attract each other similarly certain objects if they are brought near to the magnet it moves around so from this we can say that a magnet can exert force on another magnet or certain metals without being contact with it therefore it is an example of a non contact force and this type of force is called as magnetic force now let's see the next non contact force which is the electrostatic force the force exerted by a charged body on another charged or uncharged body is known as electrostatic force for example if you rub a comb against a cloth and then if you bring it near to a pieces of paper we can see that the pieces of paper it gets attached to the comb this is due to electrostatic force similarly if a balloon it is charged by rubbing it with hair and then if you lift the balloon up we can see that it will stick to the hair this force it comes into play when the bodies are not in contact hence the electrostatic force is also another example of a non contact force now let's study about the next non contact force which is a gravitational force we often find that a pen falls to the ground when it slips from a hand here we can clearly see that there is a change in the state of motion this is due to the force of gravity objects or things they fall towards the earth because it pulls them this force is called as force of gravity or just gravity it is an attractive force here what happens is that the object and the earth they are not in contact with each other but still it falls to the ground that is due to gravitational force similarly when we open the tap the water falls down eventually here the water and the ground are not in contact so from this we can say that every object in the universe whether it is small or large it exerts a force on each other object and this force is known as gravitational force so we saw what is force when does force comes to play when there is interaction between objects and then we saw what happens when a force is applied on an object either it changes its state of motion or it changes the shape of an object then we saw what are the types of forces contact forces and non contact forces now let's see what is pressure the force acting on a unit area of a surface is called as pressure what is pressure the force acting on a unit area pressure is equal to force by area on which it acts so smaller the area higher would be pressure because pressure is inversely proportional to area and pressure is directly proportional to force so if the area is small the pressure would be large if the area is large the pressure would be small let's take an example try pushing a nail into the wooden plank by its head it will be very hard why because the head of the nail it occupies more area hence the pressure is reduced now the area of the pointed end of the nail is much smaller than that of its head and if the same force is applied we can see that it is easy to push the pointed end of the nail into the wooden plank so smaller the area larger the pressure on the surface for the same force now let's consider more examples have you noticed a potter it pl he places a round piece of cloth on the head when they have to carry heavy loads do you know why he do it do this it is because they increase the area of contact of the load with their head so the pressure on the head is reduced and they find it easier to carry the load similarly in shoulder bags we often find that they have broad straps instead of thin straps it is because larger the area less is the pressure and it will be easy to carry out the bag now another example is 
If you try cutting vegetables with a blunt knife, it is very hard. Do you know why? It is because the pressure decreases when the area increases. But if we use a sharp knife while cutting, less area, more pressure is there and hence it is easy to cut vegetables using a sharp knife. Now do liquid and gases also exert pressure? Let's see. Consider an activity. Take an empty plastic bottle, drill four holes near the bottom at different levels of the bottle. Now fill the bottle with water. We can find that the different streams of water comes out of the hole and it falls at different distance from the bottle. Here at the first hole, we can see that this less distance is covered, but at the end, we can see that the pressure is much high. So from this, we can say that the pressure increases with the increase in depth. So from this experiment, we can say that liquid exert pressures on the wall of the container. Now, do gases also exert pressure? Let's take an example of a balloon. When you inflate a balloon, why do we have to close its mouth? What happens when you open the mouth of an inflated balloon? What happens? The air escapes and the balloon gets deflected. This shows that the air exerts some pressure on the inner walls of the inflated balloon. Hence, we can say that gases too exerts pressure. Now, let's see what is atmospheric pressure. The envelope of air around us is known as atmosphere. The air around us is called as atmosphere. Now, the atmospheric air, it extends up to many kilometers above the surface of the earth. The pressure exerted by this air is known as atmospheric pressure. Now, let's take an example of atmospheric pressure. When you press a rubber sucker, this is the rubber sucker, and if, if you press it against the surface, we can see that it sticks. It's because most of the air between the sucker and the surface escapes out. That is a very less air. But the sucker, it keeps on sticking because the atmospheric pressure is exerted from the outside. Now, to pull the sucker out to the surface, the applied force should be large enough to overcome the atmospheric pressure. So, from this activity, we will get an idea about the magnitude of the atmospheric pressure. But the reason that we are not crushed under this force of gravity is that the pressure inside our body is also equal to the atmospheric pressure and it balances the pressure from outside. So that's all for this chapter 11. The next session will be the question and answers of this chapter. Tune in soon for the next session. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe if you find the contents useful. Thank you so much. May God bless you all. Take care and bye-bye.